hey guys, it's been a bit of a busy time with uh, Christmas and all of that, so I thought it's the best time to go over a game room tour. It's been a long time since we did one, so let's get straight into it. So this is the office game room. I work in here as well as games. So in the background over here, we've got a load of files for all of my council work and other things I do, like my freelance writing. And then the main thing that we have, the main focus, is this massive set of games. And it goes right the way around the room, right away behind the uh, big lamp we've got, and all the way down to the floor. And I do mean all the way. Most of it is PlayStation 2, as you can see, and it's just one of those things. I am an avid collector of PlayStation 2. I believe it is one of the greatest consoles that was ever created, and the amount of software for it bears that out. I'm not going to go through and list every single thing we have here, but let's start with the little specials. I have a little section here of special games, which are in bigger cases than everything else. Everything is in alphabetical order, even here, although the specials are kept away from the rest just because there isn't enough space. So we've got the Call of Duty trilogy, Red and Devil May Cry, uh, a Monsters Inc. Scare Island with the art cards. That's the next one is a steel book of The Godfather. And unfortunately, I'm missing the slipcase on that, but oh well, I'll pick one up at some point. Special steel case of Hitman Blood Money, the Tomb Raider Anniversary special version, Manakemia Alchemist of Al Revis, with the special edition CD, but sadly not with the poster. And then we've got the Metal Gear Solid 3 large box, Prince of Persia large box on Emusha, King Kong. Scarface, Shadow of the Colossus, which everyone has to have a copy of Shadow of the Colossus. I'd love to get the uh, standard plastic case version of that, but I haven't got it so far. Silent Hill 2, Unlimited Saga, and Xenosaga Episode 2. And that's an oddity for all of you who aren't in the UK or Europe. The PAL regions only got Episode 2 of Xenosaga, not 1 or 3. You'll notice that Along the top of everything, we have some PlayStation 1 games. I don't have many PS1 games in my collection, and they are not in alphabetical order. They're just in the order of where I could put them at the time. So as you can see, we quickly run out of space for those. And we have a few other PlayStation 1 games, but not many. As you can see, I don't tend to go in for PS1. Similarly, I haven't really gone in for Dreamcast over the years. That's pretty much my entire Dreamcast collection there, except for Shenmue. But uh, that one wouldn't fit on a shelf, so never mind. So let's have a look at the PS2 again, because it is pretty substantial. We've got a lot of games here. Every single one is in alphabetical order, and they go around the room like this. And then once they get to the end of this, it comes all the way over here and starts again, and it just keeps going round and round and round. Currently we have just over 1,300 PS2 titles. I am going for the complete PAL set as released in the UK, with a couple of exceptions. Now there aren't many exceptions to that rule, but one of them is right here. And that is Space Channel 5 Part 2. There is no reason, no good reason why that couldn't have been released in the UK, and I like the series so I've added it to the collection. Similarly, I have some of the sing stars that were not released in the UK, like Deutsche Pop Rock and uh, Pop Hits 3. Down here at the bottom of uh, the collection, I have a few Xbox and Xbox 360 titles. I don't keep many in here, I just have them here currently to fill shelf space while I'm waiting for more PS2 to arrive in the collection. Also got a couple of third-party lightsaber attachments for the Wii, even though, to be honest with you, they're not really that useful. Over here we have some Desert Strike, because everyone has to have some Desert Strike, and also my single Master System game, which I have simply to test whether that the Game Gear adapter for the Master System would work. Most of the stuff that's here, as you can see, is a set of PC games. I don't carry many PC games because, although I was a big PC gamer, by the time we got to these little DVD cases, I wasn't really involved anymore. I'd moved on to consoles. My actual PC collection is over here, where I have what's left of my big box collection. I do have one more, it's the Baldur's Gate 2 Special Edition with the t-shirt and in the collector's box set, but it won't fit on a shelf, so it's downstairs in a cupboard instead where it's safe. Similarly, I've got all of my N64 collection here, 
only collect in these little cartridges. I don't bother with the boxes because there is no point. The boxes for the N64 got too easily damaged, so I never went in for them. And besides, they look quite nice when arranged on a shelf like that. Welcome to my Super Nintendo collection. I have six titles in total. Star Wing, Super Mario World, Mario Kart, Star Wars, Mario All-Stars, which you have to have because it's amazing, and Plock. All of them are great titles, I love playing them, and I only pick up titles that I actually want to play for for the Super Nintendo. A couple more Dreamcast games here, we have House of the Dead 2, Shenmue, and Fate to Black on PS1. Let's move on quickly because we're getting around through all the titles now. Got my GameCube collection here. This is the sum total of all the GameCube games I have. I will be getting more at some point, but not just yet. Got all the ones I want for the moment, apart from Star Fox Assault, which I haven't got yet, but I will add it to the collection at some point. The Metroid games and the Star Wars ones are the ones I play the most. Similarly, I don't have a huge amount of Wii games, but what I do have is pretty much the stuff that I find interesting or unique about the Wii. I have a rule that I don't go in for complete sets except for one from each generation and for this generation I went for PS2 and Xbox 360 so the Wii I haven't really gone in for all that much there is a lot of shovelware on it but again I've picked choice games that I want to play and that's how it goes. My Mega Drive collection is here it goes behind the monitor but that is the sum total of it. It's not a huge collection. Most of them I've had since I was a child and I bought them with pocket money, birthday money and things like that. So I haven't had a huge selection because I couldn't afford them back then. So we've got an interesting range of games and I really do enjoy all of the ones on the Mega Drive. So I really do appreciate playing them. Let's take a look at consoles. Now I have here a interesting SD card adapter for the Amstrad CPC. So I'm going to move that off the top and you can see we have a Mark 1 Saturn. Now we have two controllers plugged into it and it's enough to keep me gaming and I actually really love the Saturn. I wasn't a big Saturn fan back when it was first released but since getting one I've fallen in love with it. A couple of cartridges here for the Mega Drive that I haven't got in a box because some of them you just get loose. So it's the Sewell and Micro Machines 2 Turbo Tournament. Moving on from the Saturn, we have here a disk drive for an Amstrad CPC-464. Now this is actually quite interesting and these days really hard to get, but I've had it since I was a child. I bought it in about 1990 and it's worked ever since. Had a couple of drive belt changes, but aside from that, it's worked very nicely. This is fantastic. It's a Namco plug and play system with replica arcade games, Pac-Man, Dig Dug, Bosconian, Galaxian, things like that. Very, very cool. Is it Galaxian or Galaga? I can't remember. It's one of the two. Then we move on to the mighty GameCube. You might notice I've got three of the four control ports filled. I do actually have four controllers, but one of them is in another ROM attached to a Wii. We have the controllers there. And then moving over to the mighty Mega Drive. I've got the Mega Drive 2 here. I would love an original high-def uh, sound and graphics version of the Mega Drive 1, but I haven't found one in good condition yet, so I'll stick with that. At some point we're going to add a Mega CD and the 32X. There's an extra camera lens there beside my Nintendo 64, which I adore. I only had a uh, golden eye for it for many years, but since opening up my collection, I've now got 10 titles that I adore. And again, like I've said before, I only collect games that I really want to play. Then we move on to the Super Nintendo with the Super Game Boy attached, so it's very, very cool. I love playing these, especially with the Super Game Boy, because it opens up a new world of gaming, and I love it. And then finally on the hardware, we have an Amstrad MP1 modulator, which is useful for connecting the Amstrad CPC-464 to an old television. Speaking of the Amstrad CPC-464, it sits underneath my Apple Mac, and I use it very, very regularly. I just pull it out onto the desktop and I can plug it straight into the ITV because this is actually an Amstrad with a SCART cable adapter which goes straight into down here where I have a DVD player which works as a pass-through and amplifier. It just rectifies the problems that the Amstrad would otherwise have in communicating with modern televisions and my Apple Mac. A couple of uh, Amiibo, just decorative. I love them. These two I collect because they are fantastic designs and I love it. Then we've got the Wii next to the Apple Mac, always ready for action. Similarly, we have the pink PlayStation 2 Slim, which is always set up and ready to go. 
Next to that, we have a huge pile of controllers. Every single one of these is plugged into a console, but every single one is ready to pick up and just use if I want to. We've got the Saturn ones, Dreamcast, Lord of Xbox, Mega Drive one, and PlayStation ready and waiting. We also have on top there the original Xbox Live headset for original Xbox. It's not plugged to anything, no real use for it anymore, so it just sits there. Then we have the mighty, mighty Xbox original, all set up and ready to go with the mighty Dreamcast simile all set up and ready to go right next to it. Underneath we have my comics, more comics over there, more comics over there, and behind all of these other pieces of paperwork and board, more comics too. So let's start with how I get all of the games and consoles out from the consoles themselves onto the computer. You can see here that I'm playing Flashback on the Mega Drive on my Apple Mac. And the reason I could do that is I have this little switcher here, which is rather useful. It's got eight uh, composite inputs and it all comes out into one big dangle of cables which goes into my ITV hybrid. Now this is pretty good but it's baseline stuff. It's actually quite old now. I bought it in about 2007. So it's quite old but it works and it's pretty good for composite inputs as well as aerial inputs. So I've got an RF cable on the end there. And it also has S-Video if I ever get anything that I can actually use with that. So everything comes into there. At the moment I've got Flashback on, but I also have my N64 and SNES here. And they're powered up as well, so if I just press this one for the SNES, it'll bring up the Super Game Boy with F15 Strike Eagle, which is what's in here. And I can just grab the controller from here and press Start, which will change things on the screen, as you can see. Very simple. And similarly, if I look on our list here, I have all of the consoles that I can use listed out, so 3 is the N64, press that, and there we have Tetrisphere. Very, very useful. Pretty much everything is plugged into this. I've got this, as you can see on the list, SNES, Dreamcast, N64, the Wii, the PlayStation 2, GameCube, Xbox, and Mega Drive. You might be wondering how I've got the Saturn in. We've got the Saturn over in the corner there. How do I plug that in if I've got all of this? Well, the Saturn is actually on the second cable here. I've got two composite video cables going into the ITV and a switcher here. This allows me to change the sound that comes through here that comes through here via this switch. The satin's on one, everything else is on the other and similarly the AV cables just send signal through. So I can't have the satin turned on at the same time I've got something else turned on but since I'd only play one at a time and I've only got these multiple ones turned on for this as a demonstration it doesn't really matter. So the Saturn can just come in there. If I want to use anything else like the Namco plug and play, I've got to replace the cables that go into the ITV with the required ones. And similarly, these three that are on here, the AV cable and the video, that is for the Amstrad CPC that you can see in the background. Pretty simple stuff, just requires a few cables to be switched around and then everything comes onto the screen. It allows me to record all the games for Game Hammer and things like that. And it also lets me game in relative comfort. Speaking of decorative earlier on, I have far too many Wii Mario Kart wheels plus a Wii Zapper there and over next to the lights and the shelves we have another Wii third party gun which to be honest with you doesn't get used much. Loads of council paperwork and also nerdy stuff. I have a load of Amstrad software up there with a few more big box PC games and just a few boxes here and there. It's just wherever I can put stuff, basically. I am starting to run out of space in the office. A few more things there. And that big blue box there is a manual for an Amstrad CPC with a few welcome tapes in it as well. And then it just keeps going down with a lot of stuff for my work. So it's basically all work and all play all the time. But finishing off in the bedroom is the rest of the game collection. It's the overflow. So we've got some Sega Saturn games and one Xbox One game. I don't collect for Xbox One really. And then all of my overflow Xbox and Xbox 360 software, which I love. I game a huge amount on the 360. It's my favourite of that generation, but I don't have a space for it in the office. So they end up here in the bedroom with a few overflow Wii games and, of course, as I said before, the satin. And that there is a cushion shaped like a monster that my grandmother made me when I was a kid. And I love it, one of my pride and joys. So it has pride of place beside all of my games. I don't have a huge amount of Game Boy games. I just keep them in a plastic bag in a drawer in another room. So they're there when I want them 
and I can put them away very safely and very conveniently when I'm not using them. It's very simple, very convenient and I really enjoy it. So we've also got the Game Boy Color of course because you have to have a Game Boy Color and I really adore playing on this. It's very bright, it's very clear to see what's going on and I really like it. Similarly, I just keep my Game Gear games in the same drawer and I don't have a huge collection yet. I am going for the complete set, but it's going to be a long time coming. With my original Game Gear sat next to my bed, ready and waiting whenever the call for gaming comes, along with uh, a load of stuff that I really should put away one of these days. <laughs> In here's a bit of a mess. I tried to keep the office a bit more tidy. Okay, there you are. It's quite a lot of uh, games here. As you can see, the collection is very, very big and it's getting bigger by the day. Since I recorded that, we've picked up a few extra choice titles like Rule of Rose and a few others and uh, very happy to have them. As you can see, I'm keeping them in plastic cases, plastic packets even, when they get very, very expensive and uh, I don't want to have to try and replace them. So let me just put that back on the shelf. And the plastic just keeps things a little bit nicer and stops them getting uh, shelf worn as they're in the collection. So, like I said, we're going for the complete set. We've got 62.85% uh, at the moment. So I have actually beaten my title. I was going for 50% complete on the set for this year. And now we've been quite quite happily beaten that so maybe we'll get to 80% next year but it is getting more and more difficult as the amount of games that are around goes down and the amount that are in the collection goes up so it becomes more difficult to find the uh, harder to get ones but that's how it is and hopefully next year if we do another game room tour which we probably will then uh, I'll be able to come back with a big update on that but until then thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a good new year Today's video is brought to you by my graphic novels, The Collected Life of Naughty Mouse, Volume 1, All Over the House, Volume 1, and All Over the House, Volume 2. Thank you.